Thank you very much, Karin. We go further on in this uh, common block with the Swedish competent authorities with uh, uh, Kia Salin. She's an environmental strategist at the uh, Swedish Medical Product Agency. And we, uh, so we have the, um, we will bring up Karin again for, for the questions. So we will do that um, with the, the two of you. Welcome, Kia. Thank you. Yeah. My name is uh, Kia Salin. I come from the Medical Products Agency. And um, uh, our annual report was, uh, we got it last week, and I, I couldn't resist the front page uh, uh, on, on the fact and figures. Uh, because we say that we are a leading force in the drive for better health. But looking at this front page with the beautiful uh, spring green colors, no one can uh, miss. I th I I think that we also uh, uh, think that a good environment is a prerequisite for good health. Uh, I will tell you about two examples what we are working with right now, uh, and they all go together with the system that we have in Sweden with environmental objectives. And. Uh, some of you here are well aware of these, uh, but uh, I will just briefly uh, mention them anyway. Uh, we have this overall uh, environmental policy that we should, within this generation, we should solve the major environmental problems. And this uh, overall goal, we have had this for quite a long time now, 17 years, but about six years ago, last part of this sentence was added that this should be done without increasing environmental and health problems outside Sweden's borders. And I think that's a, a really uh, you, um, stress the fact that our consumption contributes to uh, environmental problems outside Sweden and we are responsible for that, the manufacturing and the production outside Sweden. And we also have, uh, to this uh, goes uh, 16 environmental objectives. And right now, I think many of my colleague uh, authorities are quite busy with working on the uh, government commission. We should, by uh, the end of March, we should analyze how our, uh, how our actions contribute to the environmental objectives. And by before this summer, we should have a plan where we uh, each year, we're yearly reporting uh, what kind of actions that we are planning to do to, to reach those environmental objectives. And uh, for the Medical Products Agency concern, uh, we are ma uh, the major environmental objective for our business is a non toxic environment. And the environmental objectives, they describe a state where we want to be. But of course, we have to uh, also take actions and we have milestone uh, targets with more specific, uh, say, who is responsible for taking what kind of milestone target. Um, and we are responsible for a milestone target saying that by 2020 there should be increased environmental consideration in the pharmaceutical legislation in the European Union and, and internationally. Uh, and as you know, uh, if, you, if you're in a partnership uh, in the European Union and in all other partnerships, you have in, in many important decisions you have to convince your partner about uh, your good ideas. And that is a very important uh, issue for us, to convince other member states that we have proposals that would benefit both uh, environment and health and companies and countries. And uh, this is, of course, a challenge. But uh, there are many other countries that also have very good suggestions, so it's, uh, we have to really 
listen and take in and listen to their arguments. And uh, we have um, uh, already look, looked into different areas for the um, pharmaceutical legislation, since you know it's harmonized on the EU level. Uh, several times, and we have had several commissions, uh, government commissions doing this. And this, you can look at this as a piece of cake, uh, where the, the different parts, they fit in together because they all affect each other, uh, actually. Uh, we think that there is a need for more appropriate and better environmental tests. Uh, so the environmental um, risk assessment guidelines should be revised, and I will come back to that uh, soon, since uh, since it's um, have news on that. Uh, we also believe that this very valuable information that you get from the environmental risk assessment, as it is now, when you have a new uh, pharmaceutical and you are um, want to have it approved you have to do these tests and it's uh, very important this information that it's come to use as it is now it is uh, stored away we have the very good exception in Sweden we have this FAS system where part of the information is published in the FAS system but uh, for many uh, 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 pharmaceuticals this is not being done uh, in, on, on the European level. And we think that this information is important for uh, wastewater treatment companies, for independent researchers, and for environmental authorities, and so on. So we think that this should be made available. We also had the uh, commission to look into the very um, tricky question, should um, environmental consideration uh, uh, be taken within the risk benefit analysis when, when you seek for your approval. And our conclusion is that there is a need for better risk mitigation measures, uh, but we don't believe that a um, very important new pharmaceutical for a patient group should be denied, but we have to have legal um, tools to make the risk mitigation measures uh, much better than they are today, because this is a quite undeveloped area, really, uh, and much more can be done there in this, this area. And last but not least, we think that there is a need for a regulatory instrument setting minimum requirements for manufacturing production, uh, manufacturing uh, conditions. Uh, and this could be done in, in different ways, and uh, we'll, I will come back to that uh, also. As was mentioned already, right now the vet veterinary uh, regulation is under review. And uh, from a Swedish point of view, we are uh, very much uh, putting a lot of effort into this. And of course, the antimicrobial resistance is a important area that, that uh, has uh, implications in the veterinary uh, um, regulation. And we have, uh, there are several uh, different aspects that we think need to be considered. For example, uh, the preventive uh, uh, use of, of antibiotics should, be, should not be allowed. And uh, Sweden think that uh, the prescribers, they should only be covered uh, for their cost. There should be no economic incentives for veterinary prescribers. And we also think that it's important to allow stricter national legislation uh, in, in this area. Here we have a, a possibility to, to try to get uh, uh, the, the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals to, to have um, uh, legal tools to minimize environmental uh, pollution from the f manufacturing. Um, and this could be done, uh, we think, uh, by putting uh, uh, this uh, in the existing uh, and very well-developed good manufacturing practice, since we have, uh, we have inspection tools, it, it's, it's up and running. 
But of course, uh, we had, when we had this commission, we also had the Board of Trade look into, would this be a, a barrier for, for global trade or what, what could be the implications for that? So, of course, we also think that since the antimicrobial resistance and the problems with the um, environmental pollution from manufacturing, it's not a problem only in Europe. And we have already existing harmonization work with the other global uh, good manufacturing practice uh, guidelines. So we think that uh, this should also be uh, uh, brought up in this harmonization work on a global uh, area. Uh, we think that a new regulation, uh, regulation setting emission limits should be worked out and, uh, by the Commission. And this could be done in several ways, of course. Uh, one traditional, the traditional way is saying specific substances at specific levels. But since we get a lot of information from the environmental risk assessments, it could also be put as a model where you, the, the worst, uh, if one can say so, for the environment, the, the worst uh, um, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, where you have this, uh, the information from the era, you have a model. So it, you don't have to uh, have uh, endless years of negotiations among uh, many countries to, to set a limit for a specific uh, substance, but you have a more um, um, another model. And uh, we also uh, think that the Commission should establish uh, restrictions for the use of medical uh, PBT substances within the veterinary medical uh, legislation and uh, the access of uh, collated information from uh, uh, the ERA uh, environmental risk assessment is also needed. And actually, uh, when we are quite optimistic about a, a few of these uh, proposals at least. This uh, negotiation is going on now for, um, started last year and it's, it's not finished, but we are quite optimistic that at least uh, some improvements will be done. And also, I, I mentioned that we think that the, the environmental risk assessment guideline should be uh, updated. Uh, and we have several, um, because of several reasons. And um, just last week, there was a, a, the, the concept paper for um, revising of the ERA guideline was voted in favor for an updating, and it will now be uh, sent for the Commission for two weeks of consultation and then back to the uh, European Medical uh, Agency for, for uh, adoption. Uh, and the concept paper where Sweden has also been um, very active, uh, this is a few examples uh, for, for the updating work that needs to be considered. Uh, there should be a review of the triggers for further assessments and additional studies, uh, including consumption data. And it should be a better use of the, the existing, uh, of this data in the public, uh, and uh, also um, to avoid unnecessary uh, repetition, for example, of animal studies. There should be a review of current test strategies for pharmaceuticals, and there should also be a possible option to, uh, for risk mitigation measures and to monitor potential impact of pharmaceuticals in the environment. And uh, th these are two examples with, when it comes to this um, milestone target uh, that we are working with that we we, to get more uh, increased in, uh, environmental consideration within the European uh, legislation for pharmaceuticals. Uh, and it was uh, wisely said in a, a working paper from the CV group that many steps uh, has been taken already. So I think now it's uh, the time to make a big jump Thank you.
skal vi. Thank you very much, Kia and Karin. Welcome back on stage. Um, get ready for questions. Uh, we have the rare opportunity of having two of the responsible national agencies on stage at the same time. Um, but let me start with um, one question to you, Karin. Uh, thank you very much about the info, uh, for the info about the um, uh, government assignment that you got. Uh, I, I told you before, I'm going to tease you with a question that is not on your desk, but that has been um, uh, risen here earlier today, which is monitoring. It's your agency. I know it's not your unit, but uh, do you have any information about what uh, is going on the, on the level of um, environmental monitoring of pharmaceuticals? Well, unfortunately, I don't have personally, but we do. We, we are monitoring, responsible for the overall monitoring at our agency, but maybe there is a colleague of me in the <laughs> room, because I can't answer you that question, Okay. Um, unfortunately. And um, then yes. probably that's a link to the model of medical product agency also. You mentioned um, the same challenge that um, was raised earlier today. How do you communicate with all these different assignments, strategies? Now, we've added to the complexity that Helen has been showing, and just the EU level, I think, for many of us, is a world full of abbreviations and um, very complex ecosystem where then the member states, in this case on a harmonized market for pharmaceuticals, have to find their operating space. What can we do? Um, maybe for you to start, um, how do you, experience the communication between the relevant levels and your peer agencies? Uh, well, there is really a challenge uh, to uh, cooperate and it's a lot going on. Uh, and, uh, but I think we have a good cooperation uh, in Sweden between the agencies and uh, between different actors. And from our side, we are really trying to, to have this cooperation and for this specific assignment, for example, we're going to meet on Monday and we will have regular meetings with the agencies uh, pointed out specifically, but also with the other actors. We think that's necessary to, to have a good result. Thanks. Yes, and Kia, I know that you're a frequent visitor to Brussels in your mission, especially when, when it comes to the milestone targets, but uh, how do you experience the cooperation between peers and the different levels? Well, um, yeah, I think uh, the government has pointed out since they often say they give the, uh, the commission uh, in, in cooperation with their different authorities, so they, it's a, a clear ambition that this should be done in, in close cooperation. But this is, of course, with, when it comes to new commissions. But I think there is, a, uh, today, is, uh, this is my personal <laughs> view, that there are many uh, authorities involved, for example, in the monitoring. Uh, we have the uh, different authorities on different levels. And also, when it comes to uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, there are many stakeholders and uh, if I just compare to the area where uh, on health side we have national uh, pharmaceutical um, uh, NLS strategy, mm -hmm. and and there uh, the stake, uh, different authorities and stakeholders working with health issues, uh, they come together and they work out plan and 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 do that uh, together, and uh, on the area for, for pharmaceuticals and the environment, there are also similarly very different stakeholders and uh, water treatment uh, and, and so on, so, but there are no regularly uh, um, arena for this kind of, of uh, cooperation, so it's been very good with this uh, cluster group, CV, uh, the, the initiative from CV to meet and discuss in this area, but uh, we, we need to have this on a reg more regular basis, I think. Well, and then, I mean, exactly for this, there is a proposal in the pipeline. I suppose we will hear uh, maybe some indication for that in the next presentation, but um, um, there has been a suggestion for a national competence center, um, and it's, uh, as far as I know, uh, on the ministry level right now to, to agree or to give the go for it, but how, how's that being, uh, how's that landing in your agency? Uh, 
Well, we, we are quite eager to, to see uh, um, uh, or at least go ahead to investigate how this could be done uh, because uh, uh, this would perhaps be an uh, arena for this. But we, we think that it, we need to look into that and, and come with uh, uh, suggestions how this could be, be done. Okay, thanks. There's one question over there. Oh, now we get some hands. Okay. <laughs> Regine Ullman, uh, Kalma Water. I have a question to Karin, and uh, a little provocative. Um, on one of your first slides, you show the statement that upstream solutions will not be sufficient to solve the problem. What do you base that statement on? Um. I base it uh, the, on uh, that in the short, uh, in a short, well, uh, <laughs> uh, in the near future, we don't see that that will be enough as uh, we will have um, people uh, taking pharmaceuticals and uh, it will come out through the human to the wastewater treatment plants. Uh, of course, that's very important to do upstreams. Um, measures as well, but um, we don't think that will be enough and uh, the government as well do not think that will be enough in the near future, so that's why they give us this assignment that we have to look at treatment, treatment methods as well. Okay. Work? Does it work? Yes. I agree with you, Colin, and the government in that respect. Uh, I have a question to you. Uh, the commission that you uh, described, uh, which is about the pros and cons of advanced sewage treatment, that uh, seems to me to have a lot of overlap with a research um, initiative that is channeled through the SWAN, the, the Hafsson Vattenmyndighet, and that is ongoing. Yes. Now, the timing of your report, you mentioned you'll collect the data basically this summer. But the SWAM projects, they go into 2017, to mean that there's a lot of research here going on that will not be reported, yeah. but you have to make sort of a statement and a, and a conclusion. How do, you, how do you fix that? Well, we asked the government the same question, actually, <laughs> according to the time limits that we get. But um, we are supposed to uh, consider, as far as possible, the results from that uh, area and from Havsa um, Vattenmyndigheten's work. And um, as far as possible, we are going to, to look at that and consider that. But we will not have the whole package, of course, due to the time limits. I think it's important, uh, I think it's important to keep sort of a verbal communication then with the principal investigators of the programs because there were a lot of unpublished data that is sort of on the yeah. way there. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a yeah. Great. Thank you. And one quick last question to you, Kia. Um, one suggestion that has been raised in different contexts and even was in the media today is in an op-ed uh, by the Swedish Water and Wastewater Association. Um, prescription for certain substances because of environmental risks. Is that an option? Just from the perspective of the regulative agency? Yes or no? Uh, we have... Uh, uh, just briefly looked into that and with uh, uh, the present legislation, uh, the legal part of, of a medical products uh, agency is saying that it's not possible right now. Some changes have to be done. And of course, uh, it's, um, you have to carefully look into what kind of consequences this will, if you, have a, a, if you prescribe a, a, a a product that has not been on prescription, that the, the usage patterns might change and you have to uh, look into that, of course. And also, what criteria should there be for, for making a prescription? But uh, we are, of course, uh, as well as others, concerned about some uh, 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 more and more coming uh, evidence that, that we have problems with the uh, quite extensive use of some uh, unprescribed uh, pharmaceuticals. So uh, 
there's something that needs okay. to really be looked into. And okay, but nothing where you can say, yes, here we go. And not, uh, not uh, some background to be done. The answer <laughs> is that it, with, with the current legislation, uh, the legal uh, side or, or the legal part uh, of my authority that says that it's not possible right now. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Karen Klingsborg and Kia Salin. Um, we go on with the next presentation. Um, yes, thank you.